Howdy neighbors, David here. And today on Boondock Stallions, we're going to be taking a look at the Child's Play franchise and why it is the most superior horror franchise to emerge out of the 1980s. Now, before we get started, I would like to talk about my Dr. Squatch order. And I think I just said talk about, talk about, talk about. Let's do this again. <clears throat> I would like to take a second now to say that it's been a week since I've been using my Dr. Squatch. So, first of all, I'm not going to lie to you. I am not going to lie. I was a little, little uh, concerned about the pine tar. I don't know if you could tell my face uh, from the last video, but when I opened the pine tar and I smelled it, it was like straight up pine salt. However, turns out that once you get it wet and start lathering it up around your body, the pine salt smell goes away completely and it actually smells good and piney and not like your household cleaner. And my cedar moss is also doing really good as is or the cedar citrus moss and the, um, oh my God, I cannot remember the other one I got. Nuts. I can't remember. Anywho, they're doing really well and I've gone without deodorant now for about a week. Haven't had any problems. Not a big dude. I weigh 255 pounds. I work in a hot kitchen for anywhere from uh, 9 to 12 hours a day. I go to the gym. I work out pretty hard there. And I go through a sweat and I've just been using the soap. So, two thumbs up to my Dr. Squatch. Uh, and now that I like the soap, I'm going to be buying more of their products to try them out and see how they go. And I'll let you all know how that goes on. So, moving on. Back to Child's Play. Now, the reason that the Child's Play franchise is the most superior franchise to emerge out of the 1980s is because it has a holy trinity. Now, a holy trinity for the Child's Play franchise is the writer, the producer, and the star. The writer, Don Mancini, is basically the god of all things Chucky. He's been the screenwriter since the very first movie and has written every single Chucky movie with the exception of the remake because it was a remake and they felt best not to even look at the old movies. They wanted to just take the idea, the characters, and the concept of the killer doll and find a new way to rework it, but I'll get back to more on that later because I'm, I'm uh, digressing. Anyways, so Don Mancini has written all of the movies and he even made his directorial debut. Now, before I say what movie was his directorial debut, let's try not to hold it against him. I'll explain why here in a few minutes. But his directorial debut was, in fact, Seed of Chucky. Now, Seed of Chucky was the last Child's Play movie to make it into the theater, and with good reason. That is a terrible horror movie, and it really showed us that the Child's Play franchise, while Bride of Chucky worked really, really well with the humor, Maybe Chucky worked better as a horror franchise and not a comedy series, but Seed of Chucky served its purpose. Yes, we got a few cheap laughs and a few good bloody scares but, and a very, very uh, terrible movie. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie to you. It's the weakest one in the series, but it's still consistent. I mean, all the movies do have a level of consistency. If you remember the original three Child's Play movies, they all began where the other one ended. Even Bride of Chucky picked up, while well, eight years later, after where we left Chucky in part three. And you have to let go a few of the details from part three, because if you saw Chucky get tossed into the fan at the end of the movie, you know that they blew him to high hell, and there was no way there was enough of a doll to salvage to sew together for any more sequels, but because we had to have those sequels, they made it, you know, just a little bit of a blur with the line in it. It's fine. We can let that go. But there was consistency, and it works, and there's still consistency. They haven't ever changed anything in the Child's Play franchise. They may have elaborated on and expanded upon, but they've never actually directly changed any of the lore. And then, uh, Seed of Chucky did, in fact, renew the horror part of the Child's Play franchise. Now, while there was a big gap between Seed of Chucky and Curse of Chucky, Curse of Chucky was awesome. I'm really upset that that didn't get to go into the theaters because he worked really, really hard on that movie, and it was an amazing Child's Play movie. It was everything we loved about the original three Chucky movies. Plus, it incorporated a bit more of the humor. It kept Jennifer Tilly, because why wouldn't you keep Jennifer Tilly in it? She's been uh, just as integral a part of 
the Child's Play franchise as Chucky himself um, since her first appearance in Bride of Chucky, and she even continued her role into Cult of Chucky, and I'm to understand that her and Brad Dorf have already signed on for um, the television series being written by Don Mancini to pick up after his Cult of Chucky movie, which was also good because it brought back Alex Vincent, and Alex Vincent kept elements of Child's Play 2 and 3, even though he wasn't in Child's Play 3 with him for the movies because they are consistent and they're trying to show their fans that they care and that they know that they've been watching these movies for a long time and paying attention to the story and how everything plays out. So, Don Mancini, The Writer, Holy Trinity Part 1. Holy Trinity Part 2, producer David Kirshner. David Kirshner has also been there uh, with Don Mancini and Chucky since the very beginning. And the producer's job on a movie, as I'm to understand it, is really one of the most important jobs out there. It's his job to find the money to make sure that we can get these movies made. And thank God for this man, because, yeah, I love every single Chucky movie, even Seed, which was crap. So, the, uh, David Kirshner, always there, always getting money, making the movies consistent and awesome since the beginning. Now... Number three, and this is last, but most certainly not least, the most important person, uh, I think, in the Holy Trinity of the Child's Play franchise, and that's Chucky himself, uh, Brad Dorf. Brad Dorf has been voicing Chucky since the very beginning. You may not even know his name. I just said Brad Dorf, and like I'm certain whatever viewers I have were like, what the fuck is he talking about? I'm talking about the voice of Chucky. He's a chameleon. Uh, he first made his appearance in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, with Jack Nicholson, which is awesome because, coincidentally, uh, he was also up for the role of Joker in the 1989 film Batman, which we know went to Jack Nicholson. But imagine Brad Dorf as the Joker. That laugh is awesome. It's iconic. And I mean, I'm glad he's Chucky. He's a, an icon on his own. But if he'd been the Joker as well, that would have been amazing. His laugh might have even rivaled that of Mark Hamill, which I know was blasphemy, and I said might. I'm sorry. Please, please, please don't kill me, DC. I love the Joker. He's going to kill my wall. Um, but Brad Dorf is awesome. Let's see. He's been in a bunch of movies you've probably seen and never even paid attention. If you're old enough to remember a little ditty called Urban Legend, he was the guy with the stutter at the very beginning of the movie that was trying to warn the girl with the guy uh, hiding in the back seat of her car that was going to go and kill her. Uh, if you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, he was Grima Wormtongue in The Two Towers. Uh, if you're familiar with Rob Zombie's Halloween movies, he was Sheriff Bracken. Let's not hold Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 against him because Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 was a fucking dumpster fire. That movie was just awful. Rob Zombie, hang your head in shame. Shame, Rob Zombie. Shame on you for Halloween 2. You just had to take the paycheck. Anything to get your wife another movie to shake her hips in. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I loved all your Devil's Rejects movies, by the way. I'm sorry for yelling. Now that we've gotten the Holy Trinity out of the way, what else makes the Child's Play franchise superior to the rest, aside from the consistency? Well, I mean, let's look at its rogues gallery of awesome characters. I love Tiffany. Tiffany was amazing, and even though the late, the great Alexis Arquette only got one movie in the franchise, I feel like had he survived Bride of Chucky, Damien would have been awesome as just like a sidekick or whatever. Um, interesting thought. This was something uh, I thought about while watching the horror franchise here recently. Um, where does Chucky's soul go? And I only ask this question because Chucky himself has admitted in the series that he's an atheist. So if Chucky's an atheist, but he also believes in the supernatural and the ability to take his soul out of his body, put it into a doll and or any other living thing on the planet, and he doesn't believe in an afterlife, then what exactly happens to his soul between bodies? I mean... Let's see, there was a six-year gap in Child's Play 2 to Child's Play 3. There was an extra four years between Child's Play 3 and Bride of Chucky. There was quite a bit of time between Bride and Seed. And once again, it was well between 1 and 20 years by the time we get to 
um, curse of Chucky. So where was his soul during all of that downtime? Was it in a type of purgatory? Is there like hell? Uh, just random little thoughts that come across my mind while I'm watching the series. So, you know, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, the Child's Play remake. Now, first of all, let's get this out of the way. I hate remakes. Re if you cannot make a remake be its own good movie, then don't remake a movie. Let's, let me list off a couple of examples of where remakes went wrong. Psycho. I mean, Alfred Hitchcock redefined cinema with Psycho. It was a masterpiece. And then they were like, let's just shot for shot remake it, only we'll make the colors pop really bright. What were you thinking? What were you smoking and can you sell me some? Because that was just a terrible idea. Uh, let's see, other remakes. Oh, Friday the 13th. I know. I know, but the Friday the 13th remake was garbage. It was like they were doing what they were supposed to do and followed the formula of the original eight Friday the 13th movies, but they fucked it up. That was just awful. Nightmare on Elm Street, what the hell was going on? Okay, hold that thought because first of all, I know everybody hated the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake, but Jackie Earl Haley was phenomenal trying to be his own Freddy and be more like a burn victim and more of a horror story and a nightmare. And I don't know if anybody's seen the movie uh, on Blu-ray with the alternate ending, but the alternate ending was awesome. I mean, first of all, let me, the whole movie was crap. The script was crap. The directing was crap. The cast, with the exception of Jackie or O'Haley, was crap. It was just a shit show all the way around in the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street. However, the deleted scene alternate ending where Jackie Earl Haley does the exact same scene he does in the theatrical release, only he does it without the CGI, without the makeup. It's just him and he's a human and he's raw and he's real and you find out that he is more monstrous uh, as himself than he is with that horrible visage. He is just awful, bad, bad, evil, nasty, and it was a beautiful deleted scene. It is a gem of how well that movie could have gone if they hadn't just destroyed it. But I've been rambling way too long about horrible, horrible, horrible horror movie remakes. Let's talk about some remakes that were good. Red Dragon. If you don't know that Red Dragon is a remake of Manhunter, now you know. Manhunter was crap. Red Dragon, awesome remake. Um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a movie we didn't even know needed a remake, had an awesome remake. Also, on Halloween Day, before we get started on my live stream, I'm going to be releasing a video debunking the entire Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I'm a Texan and I have issue with people who think it actually happened here. And I'm going to give you a brief history lesson in American serial killers and horror stories. So get ready for that. But the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Superior Remake. And this little gem right here, the Child's Play Remake, was awesome. I don't care what anybody says. This movie was great. Instead of um, it being a killer transferring his soul into a doll, they actually kind of stole the idea from Child's Play 2. At the very beginning of Child's Play 2, while the owners of the Good Guy Factory are talking about... Um, while the owners of the Good Guy Factory are talking about what happened with this doll, they're saying... Uh, the story is that some joker here at the factory tampered with the doll's voice box and it said some really crazy shit like, Hi, I'm Chucky. I'm the Lake Source Strangler and I'm going to murder you and yada, yada, yada. But that's almost exactly how they started off the Child's Play remake where you find out that a guy who was being fired from his job, a factory worker, a, a slave basically, is fired from his job that pays him just pennies and he can't take it and he kills himself, but before he kills himself, he wipes out all the safeguards on the AI inside the buddy dolls so that 
basically it's going to be able to learn and think on its own, which is really the idea for um, Terminator 2, uh, where they were teaching the Terminator to be more and more human between him and John, and it was just that gone wrong because Chucky was programmed to be Andy's best friend, and the problem with that was he didn't know how to not be Andy's best friend. He was going to be Andy's best friend no matter what. And it was terrifying. And I think they even made it scarier by adding the Bluetooth element that this thing was in charge of all of your internet services. It was in charge of your phone, your security. It could call an Uber. It could drive you anywhere it wanted. So Chucky basically had a Swiss army knife of a little ET remote finger, which yes, I know was a little cheesy, but uh, he was able to control things and kill people and wreak all kinds of mayhem through computer programming. And the worst part about it is, whether you believe in souls or not, the AI is a more terrifying story because that can actually happen. Oh my God, how awful would it be if your doll killed you? And that's another reason that the Child's Play franchise is one of my personal favorite franchises in the entire uh, genre of 80s horror movies because... I believe it was. Uh, it came out in 1988. I was five, but I didn't get to see it until the summer of 1989 when my older sisters rented it because I used to have a My Buddy doll. My buddy's name was Timothy. I loved him. He was my best friend. I took him everywhere. And my sisters were like, well, hey, this movie's about a kid with a doll. You're going to love it. Let's sit down and watch it. And they put me in front of the movie, turned off all the lights, surrounded me so that I wouldn't be able to run and made me watch it and terrified me and it was awesome and I'm really thankful that they did that because I love horror movies. So that's been my take on the entire Child's Play franchise. Um, if I had to give you a top five horror movie franchises, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre at number five, um, Child's Play at number four, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what the hell? I lied. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is number five. Halloween is number uh, four. Child's Play is number three. Nightmare on Elm Street is number two. And as always, Friday the 13th is number one. Uh, next week, I'm doing a video on horror movies with a multiverse. There are two really popular ones. If you know what those are, let me know down in the comments. As always, give these videos a like. Hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, be excellent to each other, and party on dudes.